Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. My name is Marilyn Shannon, and I am so excited to welcome you today to the Breaking Free Show. I hope you're all doing really well. Hope you've all had a wonderful week, and we have a wonderfully fun show in store. So here we go. Remember, you are all welcome to call in anytime you want. You can take part in the show. Just like go under the video and to the right of the video, you see a line, nickname, put your name there and take part in the chat. You can uh, ask questions, you can comment, you can talk to all the other people in there. And during the show, you can call in to 919-518-9773. If you've got a phone or you can come in on Skype and that's computers. Two, that's the number two, K voice, anytime you want, because this show is for you. And before we get on with our show and I introduce my guest to you today, I'm going to say hi to Amnon. Hello. Hello. How are you? How are you? I'm good. And you? I'm fine. Yeah. You look fine, too. I am fine. And fine, I love that fine, new fine. picture, but Thank everybody's going to have to wait till the end. They're going to have to wait till the end. I, have, yeah. I had to succumb to getting a new picture because I grew my hair longer and my picture was, was short hair and couldn't do that anymore so yeah. i'd go places and people didn't know who if i was me or somebody else so i i went ahead and got a new headshot and i didn't want to do it but i did it so you'll i'm unveiling it later you'll see so with that let's get on with our show so i want to introduce my friend today greg witt hello hello good to see you it's <laughs> you nice see, to be here yeah, it's gonna be fun huh yeah it's gonna be a fun show so today we're we'll, Greg is our, our drummer boy, and he is doing things to really help, through drumming, to really support connection between people. And he's going to get into all of that and some of his story and where he comes from and how he got started and good story. And I want to say, you know, I do a lot of uh, stories, techniques, strategies, philosophies, all about breaking free. And I'm very devoted to sharing men. I know that, you know, I'd share men and women all the time, but I really want to get into a lot of men and the stories that motivate them, that drive them, and to share their journey as well. So feel free if you are a man or you know a man and you'd like to share your story, let me know, okay? Marilyn at MarilynShannon.com. So who's Greg? Wow. So I'm Greg Witt and I'm a facilitator and educator. And I work with people who are trying to reconnect with one another and with the planet around them. Whoa, that's yeah. a good, that is an Lofty elevator goals, speech. Right? Whoa, yeah. that's an elevator speech like I never have. So how do you do it? Uh, so I use drums and percussion as a modality for uh, using improvisational music making to break down the barriers that language often causes. So we're working on embodying rather than understanding some of these ways that help people play nicely together. So what got you motivated to do this? It was a total accident. So my background was military and higher education. And when I left those fields and started looking for something else to do, I stumbled upon an occasion to witness a drummer uh, playing an African drum called a djembe drum uh, lead a parade of 300 children through the campus at North Carolina State University. And I was mesmerized. So I jumped in the parade and followed them along and cornered the guy at the end and said, what is that? How did you learn it? And where do I get one? I need to do this thing. And so that became a hobby, that became a passion, that ultimately became a livelihood. So when you say mesmerized, what do you mean? Well, there's something about uh, rhythm that connects with people on a heart level. You know, we... We start in the womb by feeling and hearing our mother's heartbeat. So people are naturally attuned to rhythms. And I think as we progress through life, we start to ignore those kinds of things. When you're a kid, you play outside. You're connected to nature. When you are a grown-up, you work inside because you've got to earn a living. So as we maneuver through our lives, we kind of lose touch with some of those natural uh, rhythm models that help us... Um, I guess, help us reconnect with the, the old ways of being. You know, it's so interesting because certainly music, we connect through music, sure. we connect through a lot of things, but there is something that I, that I can see, and I, didn't know, I don't know about it, but I can feel it, that with a rhythm we can, we join in, our, we join the rhythm. We yeah. connect with each other and we join in at the, at, you know, if the beat is, if it's, you know, 
whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. We can join each other at the same place. Is that, it's like a, it's like a string or a tie that brings us together. Well, you know, there's that, that theory of uh, entrainment. And people have a tendency to want to do Explain that. Explain entrainment. Uh, so entrainment, most people will understand when they see uh, these videos of a bunch of metronomes sitting on the table. And as they swing, they start to synchronize. And um, the science behind that is that the vibrations start to align. And that's true of metronomes sitting on a table, and that's true of people sitting in a room. And so when, when you hear about these old wives' tales of women who live together who have their biological cycles start to synchronize. That's exactly right. Yeah, it's just our nature to want to harmonize and rhythm with other people. Mm. And so when you, what were you like growing up? What if this I, got you at this point and yeah. you were in the middle, so it's like you had a, a childhood, a young a younghood, and then you get into the military, mm -hmm. which had to be, well, you explain it, and then now drumming yeah. and being connected to this idea of connection. Right. So what were you like growing up? Well, I grew up in rural North Carolina, so I spent a lot of time on my own outdoors because I didn't have a whole lot of neighbors around. Uh, so I, I hung out in the woods, and the activities that captured my attention then were things like scouting, where I could do hiking and camping and uh, boating and, and these other things that kept me connected to the natural world. And scouting has this big um, uh, tenant for service to others. And so that became a foundation for the rest of the uh, way that I would live my life. So when I entered college, I started doing things to be of service to the community around me. I became a resident advisor in the dorms, uh, president of different organizations. I joined a, a service fraternity. So everything that I was doing to grow into adulthood was all built around being of service to other people. And connecting. Yeah. And being a connector. Yeah. And helping people connect. Right. So when you were con so who did you connect with growing up? Who did I connect with? I mean, you with? connected in nature. Did you connect with people? Some. I, I mean, I had some great role models and mentors as teachers and scoutmasters and those kinds of things growing up. Um, but mostly I spent a lot of time on my own as a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a stay-at-home mom until I was about the age of six. Uh, and then my brother was born, and, and we went off to daycare and after-school things and, and that kind of stuff. And mom went back to work, and my dad worked third shift. Uh, so he was there, but not there a lot of the time. Uh, so I, I had a lot of time to do a lot of self-reflective kinds of things as a young person. Which is uh, interesting, because I find that to be interesting for, in today's world in, in, in talking to a lot of men. Because those of you that might know, I'm writing a book about men, and I'm fascinated by the notion of the awakening you know, mm. women awakening, men awakening. And I'm finding that a lot of men are coming into a place of wanting to connect, of wanting to share emotionally and create creatively and all of those things. So it's, it's interesting to see where or how it got started or how, what was, you know, what fueled a, a, a man from day one. Because, you know, a lot of women were okay, were given the permission. You know, mm -hmm. giving dolls and stuff like that to, you know, nurture. Well, I had my G.I. Joe dolls, but, you know, that's not the same. Why is not? Why is it? Why uh, wasn't that the same? Because then you're driving Jeeps and blowing up towers and, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, zip lining through the jungle yeah. and, and those kinds of things. So it's a much different kind of right. play than, right, right. than I think young right. girls had. Yeah, because we were giving dolls to diaper and nurture uh -huh. and all of those things. This was not that. This was not that. But you have a certain propensity for being a certain way. Did you recognize that early on that you liked to bring people together and it mattered? No, because, you know, as a young person spending so much time alone, I, I read a lot. And so I thought a lot. And that wasn't always a lot of fun. Uh, the kids that I grew up around in, in rural North Carolina I didn't always like uh, and didn't align with. You know, I wasn't interested in Little League or uh, those kinds of things. I wasn't a sports fan and still am not. Um, so my interests were really different, and I found more purposeful living through some of these organizations that were about caring for others. It's so fascinating to me because I think, you know, we are, in some regard, we are who we are, mm -hmm. and then we have opportunities to either be different than we truly are or really to find ourselves or to just, like, you just started out, like, honoring you 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 honored yourself is what i can see i mean you 
didn't force yourself to being friends with or doing things that you didn't like. Right. Did you, you didn't, did you? No. And how I did you know that? How did I know that? Yeah, how did you know? How did you give yourself permission or know that you at an early age did not have to play football or did not have to do those things and you could Well, I didn't. There were some really disastrous experiments in there along the way, you know. Like what? So, you did know, you that, share? that that first summer in Little League uh, was a big eye opener that um, this is not my thing. And that there are other things that capture my interest and, and inspire me and, and generate that awe and wonder that we were talking about earlier today. That um, Were you bullied? Was I bullied? Were I you think, bullied? In, I think into... all kids were bullied at some point. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a big problem in our society, so and, and particularly boy, in, in boys. In boys, we Trying to different. find their leverage in the world. You know, I wonder, I mean, I, I'm, I'm wondering if that's going to be something I discover. That a lot of sensitive, that a lot of boys that grow into their sensitivity, have been bullied. Like I was talking to this really young, lovely young guy the other day. He's a dancer, uh-huh. and he's like twenty, and he's a dancer. And when he w- he's been dancing since he was six, and just loving. Like today, he said people wa- love to watch him do hip hop, but back then they weren't so thrilled with it. But he stuck to it. Mm-hmm. I mean, he had to realize that this is who he was, right? And continued his path of dancing. Yeah, and so I love it. I think that's the hard thing. It's is in our society embracing Western values. Um, there isn't often a lot of room or encouragement or support around doing what you love. It's all about doing what is expected. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And you said your dad wasn't home that much but when when was he home at all enough to spend time with you in the woods or did he encourage you or no i didn't have that kind of relationship with my dad Mm -hmm. Uh, dad was the stoic that sat in the lazy boy and flipped channels or listened to the radio and uh you know he only uh chimed in when when there was something that mom wasn't able to manage on her own and and later on in life did it ever change Uh, at 18 i went to college and, and never went back really so uh i don't think that has changed a whole lot um, but my dad and I aren't that close, so I, I don't have a good answer for that. Okay. Well, it uh, happens. Dad is dad. Dad is yeah. yeah it happens. So get let's get to let's talk about some drumming. Please. Okay. So tell us about. I have a question on the chat, and it says can, uh, she, Chris is wondering if drumming can help kids grow their emotional regulate their emotional skills. Absolutely, and and I don't know that. Emotional skills is the way I would describe it. Okay. Uh, I would say relationship skills, certainly. Okay. Uh, but I'm not a therapist, and so I don't have a background or a training in those kinds of things. Uh, but drumming is really wonderful in that it breaks down the barriers and it levels the playing field. Anyone can participate in that regardless of their experience level. It's uh-huh. not like you're having a flute circle where people need a, a really high level of, of skill and training right, to right, be able right, to right, play right. that yeah. instrument right, well. right, right. right. Uh, with a couple of seconds, you're banging on a drum and making sound. Um, and everybody can make different sounds, right. and it still be connected? Yes. So my my job as a facilitator of, of interactive rhythm programs is helping people play in, in cooperation with one another. And so what that does is allow a lot of nonverbal expression. Uh, so in particular in some of the health and wellness kinds of programming, uh, you're really asking people to... Um, express themselves through the drumming and that often shakes things loose through if you want to say the power of vibration then it's really um, allowing them to loosen up literally uh, some of the things that they're bottling up inside so what have you seen like when you say the power of vibration so explain that Uh, like I do lots and lots of kids programs and so when I go into a school and I'm working with children uh, they are confined in a classroom all day long. And maybe they get a little recess, but that isn't always true any longer. But they have an opportunity to uh, creatively and um, loudly express themselves. And it's such a joy to see children get to play in that way. What do you see when they're done? After they've drummed, after they've banged, what do you see? There's a, a sense of shared experience. Uh, my programs focus on values, so we're, we're really hitting on some of the things that tribal cultures are calling important to, to being able to exist together in society. 
So we're affirming uh, lots of those sentiments. And then there is a, a biological benefit to group drumming where you've created uh, an occasion where people can connect. You've created an occasion where uh, people can vent. And you've created a, an occasion where people are able to uh, engage in creative self-expression. So there's this artistic um, outlet to it as well. So uh, the kids and adults that do this kind of activity are getting it on lots of levels in ways that they can, can really see this uh, calming effect. Uh, it helps to, uh, on a clinical level, when you do some of the protocol-driven drumming activities, uh, you're boosting the immune system, you're reducing stress, in a um, workplace setting, those things have benefits that relate to cost savings through um, reducing burnout and uh, helping boost retention. So you're saying that there are industry, corporations, companies that prescribe regular drumming for their employees? I, I wouldn't say regular work? drumming, but certainly as an activity. It's very popular for an off-site kind of occasion, retreat work. Like a team building? Kind team of building activities, yeah. Uh, certain corporations do this fairly often. Uh, I have one particular client that I work with uh, at least on an annual basis. Uh, the Toyota uh, U.S. headquarters actually has a dedicated drum room in their high-rise out in California. And so there's a place where their employees can go and interact and engage on that nonverbal level. Uh, to help build shared experience. Fascinating. It's cool. It's very cool. It's very cool. Now, you say you, you said protocol earlier about certain protocols. Like, what, what would that be? Yeah, so there's a couple of wellness-based drumming programs. Uh, one is called Health Rhythms, and one is called Drumbeat. Health Rhythms was developed uh, and funded by the Remo Drum Corporation out in California, and they basically brought in a neurologist, partnered with uh, a music therapist and social worker to do clinical research around the wellness benefits of drumming. And Drumbeat was a similar approach uh, using group drumming. Uh, in this case, they were in Australia, I believe, working with at-risk youth. And so they were able to get the biological feedback uh, to determine what indigenous cultures have known for thousands and thousands of years, and that's that these shared music-making experiences are, in fact, good for you. Wow. It's a, it's a, it, it really is a, a, an incredible, because it's something that you kind of know, but then to hear you speak about it takes it to a whole nother level. Right. We know it, but we live in a world that wants to quantify it. Right. And so you have to have that documentation in order to market this. To prove it. Into some of those settings. To prove it. So you also were talking about tribal. Yeah. So we talk about that, because I know you and I have chatted about this before, and this is something that's very important to you as well, right? Different diversity and all of that. So, so my graduate work was in ancient wisdom traditions and looking at the ways indigenous cultures have perpetuated for all of these thousands of years. And yet we as Westerners in, in our world uh, seem to think that our way of living is better. And in fact, we have tremendous technological advances, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that our quality of life is any better. So the, the level of relationship, I think, is the really the most important thing. And that is much stronger in a close community. And generationally, we would see that, you know, in our grandparents, how much tighter they were as a family, as a community, as a congregation, perhaps, uh, and that has started to wane more and more as interpersonal face-to-face -face relationships dwindle and digital relationships flourish. And people are moving away and doing all that stuff. So what, what, what are you looking, what is your hope? I mean, like, you, what are you motivated by? Well, I like to create occasions to remind people of what's really important at the core of it all. You know, we get caught up in our day-to-day -day we're going through the routines of what we have to do, what we feel we need to do versus what we should do and what's really important. Which is what? Which is taking care of one another. And how do you see us doing that? How do you see us taking care of each other? I mean, so do you, see, so, okay, you see the drumming as a way for us to come together as a, as a kind of like a beginning for us to connect 
and then once we're connected, what then? Right. So, okay. so really what, what this is is an opportunity for me to introduce some big ideas around philosophy. Oh, go for it. And, and <laughs> because we're, we're doing hands-on experiential learning, we're, we're embodying these practices rather than just trying to get them up here in our heads. So the, the drumming is really teaching about oneness and this whole idea that we are not separate from one another, that we are interconnected uh, parts of a much bigger thing, and that sometimes we forget that stuff. Mm -hmm. So this is a chance for me to poke you and say, hey, keep in mind that we really are all in this together, and we can't do it on our own. So I want to, again, wrap myself and help my audience understand what happens when we drum together. We, if, if I'm just drumming yeah. and there's nobody there, right. I can feel my heart beating to the rhythm of the drum. Sure. I, I think that happens naturally for me. If I go slow, if I go fast, me and my drum become one. And mm -hmm. I'm not drumming, but when I have drummed, that's how it felt. And I have been in a room in a, uh, as a mediator. One of the things that I've done in a big conference, peace uh, you know, it was all about conflict resolution, was sure. they gave everybody drums. And we all went in, and it was a blast. Right. So you begin, and it was just everybody laughs at the same thing, mm -hmm. and it's just a real great opportunity. But it's that rhythm that you create, mm -hmm. that people start to, do they start to create a, a similar rhythm, or is it just, ha, ex, really explain it again. Well, you know, if I break it down to the process of how I create a rhythm event, mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm going to go through this continuum of control where first I'm teaching you and then I'm empowering you to take control on your own. And so there's this uh, mythologist okay. that I follow, a guy named Michael Mead. And he's someone that was really big in the men's movement back in the 80s, a uh, contemporary of Joseph Campbell and Robert Bly and, and really working through those uh, ideas of, of empowerment through gender. And he's a drummer as well as a storyteller. And, and he talks about how we are able to, through this means, mm -hmm. really uh, express the things that we don't normally get to express. And so what's happening in a, a group drumming setting is that we can do it the way the indigenous cultures have done and get the benefit. But we don't have to. We can do it our own way and contemporize this kind of experience or ritual or whatever it may be so that it's more meaningful to us. So contemporizing it means what? What would be a way of contemporizing it? So I can, I can go in and I can teach you a West African drumming rhythm based on a particular culture and a particular song or a particular tradition from some village and some tribe. And that's really wonderful and that's great, but that's theirs. But if we come together as a group and we create our own experience and our mm -hmm. own song, and then we're engaging uh, in something that we're, we're doing and collaborating gotcha, on. Gotcha. It's a very different level of engagement and investment. I see. So then we create our own music together. Right. And we're playing our own music together. Exactly. And we all have a piece of playing that music and of creating that music together. Right. So then I'm not teaching you, I'm empowering you. And that's a totally different approach. Interesting. So... Um, and you talked about the gender thing, which I find also important because I am all about the genders getting along and mm -hmm. finding their place of connection. Because I really don't believe, literally, that men are from Mars and women are from Venus. I just think that we're waking up and we're waking up and wondering where we are, but it's not because we're on different planets. It's just that we're waking up and going, like, okay, now what? So what is possible with drumming and gender connection? Well, you know, interestingly enough, I'm called upon to do a lot of women's work with drumming. Okay. Uh, also men's work, but not as often. Uh, I think okay. women are more willing to uh, connect on that emotional and personal and, and uh, vulnerable kind of experience, uh, more so than men are. But there, there needs to be occasions where men and women can commune separately. And we're one of the few cultures on the planet that doesn't keep that more separate. We're all about integrating uh, the genders, and that's not uh, historically true in lots of other societies. We think we know better, and there are certainly benefits to that, 
Uh, but there's a lot of wisdom in not doing it that way, too. What do you think? So what do you think? Uh, how, how would it be? I think it has to be some balance of the two. So give I, me an I, example. I think there have to be occasions where men can be men and women can be women. And what does it mean and for a man to be a man and a woman oh, to be Oh, that's a really big question. Oh, come on. Give me an answer. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, what does it mean to be a man? And, and, and hold on. Huh. And if anybody wants to join this conversation, please feel free. So right. call us. If you have a phone, you can call us at 919-518-9773. Yeah. Right. If you have access to Skype, come in at computers. That's plural, the number 2, K voice. We'd love to have you there. You can chat with us on the chat. If you're listening to us on Blab or anywhere else, you're more than welcome to join in. We'd love to have you. And you know, communicate your feelings about what we're talking about. So go ahead. So what does it mean to be a man? I don't know. I'm not an expert on being a man. I'm only an expert on being me. And? Well, yeah. you, okay, so you said it's good to be, for men to be men, women to be women. And so what does that mean? To accept ourselves as however we are. Exactly. And you, do you feel that drumming is, uh, is the key to help unlocking that? I think drumming is a tool to it's help unlock that. Okay. Is it the key? No. Okay. Is it useful? Yeah. Certainly. Okay, so how? Tell me. How? Because yeah. the, the drumming experience levels the playing field. Everyone is starting at the same um, place. right? In general, a community drum circle is an entry-level experience. No one's any better at it than anyone else. So when you go down to the park and you see all the drummers rocking out there, maybe some of them have had some training, mm -hmm. but most of them are just self-taught. And really, they're giving themselves permission to play. And that's what happens in, in gender-specific groups as well. Uh, I think women's groups or men's groups are just more willing to express themselves among themselves. What do women's groups do with the drum? How do they express it differently than men or men differently than women? I, I think it's uh, less competitive with women's groups. Uh, it's more nurturing, more supportive. Uh, I think men's groups are really... Uh, wailing away and, and getting out their pent-up frustrations because as a society, we've taught men to uh, hold closely to their emotions and their angers, and those kinds of things get pent up. We don't have a lot of occasion to uh, vent that male energy. Uh, women, on the other hand, are encouraged to be loving and supportive and expressive, and uh, so those things tend to show up when those groups segregate and engage in drumming as well. And what happens when they come together? Uh, it, it takes a little practice of, of getting to know you. And it takes some good... So, and it, that's like any... It's like yeah. all the time, right? Right. So, okay, so, so there's yeah. this, this uh, drummer out on the West Coast uh, that wrote a couple of books. His name's um, Russell Buddy Helm. Okay. And one of his books is called um, uh, Let the Goddess Dance or something like that. That sounds gorgeous. And so he tasks men to support women in their drumming to create safe space for that to happen and so i think that's what we as groups need to do in general is create those occasions where people can be themselves without judgment without uh commentary and i think drumming is a good opportunity to do that why why because it's nonverbal. and there are other things that are nonverbal. Yeah, I mean, Why we're, we're blessed as, as the only creatures on the planet. You know, the furries can't do it. The fins can't do it. The uh, feathers can't do it. Mm -hmm. We're the only people that have the gift of language that can articulate words in the world. Right. Right? And so um, we get caught up in that. We, we get stuck in that language. And in some regards, I think it disempowers us. Mm -hmm. So we, we talk about things. I mean, look at the, the industry around mm -hmm. mental health and talk therapy. Right? Yeah, here we are talking now, but we could be drumming. Yeah, that's and a whole that, different experience. It would be a whole different experience. Yeah, and and so I'm I'm really digging because it's so profound what Greg is talking about that I really want to bring up the the stuff we don't think about. Yeah, and and somebody's asking if you brought drums. Well, you didn't. But too bad we didn't tell him to. Right. Right. Did you think about bringing it? Um, I do, and yet uh, it's a challenge in a studio setting Yes, uh, if you aren't set up to mic those kinds of things. Right, right. Um, and it's not as much fun on your own. I mean, one-on-one, -on -one, it, it's certainly entertaining, uh, but to sit and listen to drumming uh, isn't a whole lot of fun. I don't do that. I don't sit and listen to a gaggle of drummers. I don't walk up to a drum circle in a park and just sit and listen. Oh, uh, why? I, I mean, what that's noise. Did? 
Oh, so, and, so until you actually get in it and you're a part of oh, it. Oh, see, that's okay. Here, yeah. we're, here we're getting there. Okay, we're getting there. That's the point right there. That's a picture. We get that's oh, so that's it, right? Yeah. Now you're gonna get a, a benefit of being near it. You're gonna get that sonic massage either way. That and low frequency right, right. vibration right. is going to affect you if you're anywhere right. close to it. But it's not the same if you're helping create it. You know, I, uh, I see it with uh, little kids that'll go to a, a drumming event. And, and they're holding their ears and saying, too loud, too loud, too loud, until they get their hands on a drum. And then they're part of that creation. And then the too loud doesn't happen anymore. So you don't have to say hello. You don't have to tell who you are. You don't have to tell anybody like Greg did about his childhood. You don't have to say anything. You just pick up a stick or take your hands. Mm -hmm. You don't need anything in particular. Right. And you can join in and connect in a moment, with people you don't know. Right. But there are lots of different kinds of drum circles. Okay. And what you've just described would be appropriate in some of those settings. Okay. Right? A community drum circle where everyone is welcome. Uh, certainly, you can walk in, grab a piece of gear that's left out for sharing, and jump right in. But if you walk into an African drumming circle uh, where they're playing specific rhythms and traditions from a culture that they're trying to honor... Uh, you can't just grab something and start banging on things and making noise. If you walk into a ceremonial drumming setting uh, where they're embracing a particular tradition or sentiment or doing uh, uh, energetic or, or, or spiritual work, uh, it's not appropriate to walk in and just so jump So what's right the advantage in? And is it just what you're hearing? Is it, is it still being a part of it even though you're not playing? Is it that my rhythm of my heart is going to be felt? Is, is, is my rhythm of my heart part of the rhythm of the group, even if I'm not drumming? Is, is there going to be an immediate connection? Yeah, but it's like going to the symphony. You know, you can enjoy mm -hmm. sitting and listening. With, the, with everybody else. With everybody else. But it's totally different when you're a player. Right? Then you're contributing and not just absorbing. Gotcha. Interesting. So, you know, our show is all about freedom, right? Right. So we love to share things that maybe we didn't think about before. Maybe we thought about, but not in the same way. And so my feeling is, how are you? How have you thought about drumming before? Have you ever thought about drumming before? And have you ever, even if you never think about it and never do it, can you imagine an experience that people can have that don't know each other, that or that do, that can come together in a certain way with drumming and connect and, and build a relationship and have a heart-to-heart -heart experience without even uttering a word. I mean, you know. I, I mean, I'm sure there's different kinds of experiences to do those kinds of things, but I don't know those. I just know that this is a consistently effective methodology for getting there. Sounds good. So uh, Susiani on our chat is saying that she plays the air drums very well. Oh, wonderful. Now, what is the air drum? In the air. In the air. And how do you play that well? Wow, gosh, I don't know how you play that well. Can't yeah. Oh, you, you can't. Always, why don't, why don't. And you hear it. Right. Can you hear it? No. I mean, you're drumming along you to whatever's on the radio. Oh, or you're a dashboard says, drummer, I'm, right? Uh, duh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. imagining, like, hearing, like, t -t 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 of my own. And yet, it's a physical expression of something inside you, and whether you connecting. hear it or not. And you're connecting with the music on the radio. Yeah. So it's freedom. I used to drum for yoga classes a lot. Uh -huh. And uh, one of the teachers I played for, her name was Leela Rasa Brown. Uh -huh. And she <laughs> said this thing in the very first class that I, I played for. And she said that your breath is your connection between your inner self and the outer world. And that air drumming is just that. Right. right? You're, you're bringing into the physical realm something that's inside you. Well, well, Susiani is saying that she was being funny, but... I think that there still is a level of to uncover in this in that even if she was being funny and it's just like this there's still a level of connection there there's yeah. still a level of enjoyment it's like dancing on your own or you know doing anything like that right. you know it's 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 a way of connecting and my goodness don't we need more ways of connecting we do and and just like Susiani is saying you know she's getting a, a, a obviously she's texting you and not me but there's this, this self-deprecating kind of thing when it comes to these sorts of self-expressions. And 
most of the people that I see in drum classes or drum circles have had that kind of experience somewhere in their life where they were told they shouldn't sing or they should give up that instrument in favor of some other uh, creative endeavor. And so when you have these uh, opportunities to just go for it, uh, they're golden because we don't get them very often. You know, there was a movie a long time ago. It's not that long, but it was a story about a little boy who was brought up like in an orphanage. And every time he heard a piano, he uh -huh. felt this thing. Do you remember no. that story? And uh, at some point he became this concert pianist. Okay. And he... But he, his mother played the piano, and his father was a rock star, and he would hear this music. Right. And then they found each other. Did you ever see that? No, I don't know. It was one. beautiful. It was August something or another. It was. It was oh, a, August Rush. That's it. Uh, a Robin Williams film, maybe. He wasn't. Was Robin Williams? Yes. Yeah. He was that crazy man in there, right? Right, right, right. right. It was a beautiful movie. Yeah. Right? He, he connected with his mother. And had not seen her, mm -hmm. but through the through the music, right, right, yeah, and it was beautiful. And they actually found each other because he was playing a concert, right. It was beautiful. And when I got done, it was mo one of my most favorite movies. When I got done, and my I have these sons, and they would bang on everything, yeah, everywhere they would go, they yeah. would bang, and I was I get irritated by it. I was one of those stop banging on the furniture, you know, stop banging every time you. But you know, after that movie, now I take a, I, I, I don't, and it's been years. But even now, I'm, I'm, I let it go, right? From that movie. Yeah, my niece, uh, her name is Giovanna, and she's three and a half now, <laughs> and um, <laughs> she is amazing because she is absolutely convinced that she can do anything, and she's an artist, she's a musician, she's a dancer, uh, she's a designer, she's a painter. She can do anything in the world. And it's up until about the age of, um, oh, I want to say it's 11, that we developmentally hold that same mindset. We are capable of anything. And then we start to compromise. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Up until then, you are absolutely certain that you don't like green peas. Uh, but then you start to compromise. And you're, you're starting to play this game of give and take with, with the world around you. And uh, we give up on the things that often bring us joy because they aren't practical. So do you think that drumming is one of those things that brings us back to who we are and our uh, childhood or our intent as a child or our childlikeness? I do. I do. I think drumming, um, community drumming in particular, is, is kind of a gateway drug for those things, right? You start to uh, access that stuff that you've set aside for so long. And it, it gives you that opportunity to let that stuff bubble up a little bit. And uh, uh, my wife is a coach, and she is an artist by trade and, and training, mm -hmm. and, and she brings a lot of creative process into her, her coaching practice. And she talks about the muse. And if you don't uh, give your muse the love that they demand, they leave, right? So you, it, you have to exercise that creative muscle. And so drumming gives you the opportunity to start stretching. Stretching that creative muscle. Why is it a stretch? Yeah. Why is it a stretch? Because we, we let that atrophy. We, we let that open-mindedness, right. we let that skill right. set disappear mm -hmm. as we focus on other things. So as an art form, mm -hmm. it it's more accepted. You tell me right or wrong. No, there's no right or wrong. Okay. But it's more accepted to pick up a, a stick but to use your hands and not really know what you're doing. We've talked about this. Yeah. Then maybe it is to pick up for comfort zone for people to pick up a paintbrush or to, you know, join a group and sing or join a group and dance. Well, that's all subjective, right? Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I paint on my iPad. It doesn't mean that I'm any good. But if it brings me joy and it reduces my stress. So what's easier it, for people to get into? For, every, for everybody's got a different away. medium. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe yours is, is finger painting and maybe mine is, is rhythm. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe Amnon's a dancer when no one's watching. But who knows? Right. Yeah. But when you go into these settings and do workshops and mm -hmm. things, do you find, I mean, I'm, and I'm, maybe I'm making a stereotype, but I'm just guessing that in brand new situations and team building and things like that, it's easier for people to let loose. 
in drumming than it would for first go round, than it would for somebody to say, here, everybody get up and dance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's what I mean. It's a little more um, confined, I think, in some regard. Okay. Uh, it, it doesn't require you to have uh, a large level of physical coordination or a certain body type. You know, anybody can drum. My, my buddies down in Charlotte run a, uh, a benefit called Drum Strong that they created uh, simply because they wanted to raise funds and awareness around cancer initiatives. Uh, but they knew that not everyone could um, ride a marathon or mm -hmm. um, uh, ride a bicycle like Lance Armstrong. You know, so, but they knew that everybody could sit there and tap on something. And that was a way for them to access uh, this thing and to participate in the group activity. Yeah, that's what I, I'm, I'm imagining that to be so. Mm -hmm. That drumming, when you're given an opportunity, even as, in a family, can you, I can imagine how cool it would be for a family to get together and drum together. It's fun. Yeah, I mean, to make up, yeah. to find that connection. You know, right? It's right. It's fun it's because fun. you're participating. It's like, right. you know, cooking a meal with your family. If you let everyone contribute, then it's really fun. Right. If mom has to do it all on her own, it's a lot of work. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, let me. I want to ask you something else because how you sense things is pretty interesting. Do, would you consider yourself to be an empath? Uh, I've never thought of myself that way. Uh, my sweetheart would say absolutely not, uh, that, that I'm not a particularly intuitive person. Um, but I think uh, this kind of thing, I, I have some ability to tune into. Um, so when I talk about an empath, for all of you listening, I'm talking about somebody who can feel what other people are feeling. Mm. Tap into people's feelings? Uh, I would say I'm sensitive. I, I would say I am compassionate. I, I don't know that I would have described myself as an empath. Yeah. And you, but it's language. It's vocabulary. So you can talk about me that way if you want to. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I, but I'm curious because, like, I feel I'm, I'm, I'm an empath. I feel like I can experience other people's feelings. I have to know when to shut it off. You know, if you're putting yourself into situations, where you are going for the feeling. Because mm. that's what you're doing when you are, and tell me, if, if when, you are go, when you are working with people, when you're working with a group, you're working with kids, you are going for the connection. Yes, but I'm doing that as an observer, uh, as a facilitator. I am a part of yet separate from the process. So I am helping people move from that, along that spectrum of learning uh, exploring, empowering, collaborating, and taking charge. Uh, so I have to have some distance from that process in order to be effective as a facilitator. Right. But then, do you, okay, granted, because even when I'm coaching, I can exper I can feel some of where somebody is, but I don't want to feel everything they're feeling, mm -hmm. right? Because, I mean, what good will I be if I'm, like, feeling like my, in some cases, that my world is falling apart? Yeah. So I have to be able to know on some level, what their experience is like in right. order to support somebody in going forward sure, or understanding where they are. You'll see in a, a group setting uh, different levels of ability or comfort. And so part of my job is to, to go in and make that more accessible for people. Mm -hmm. um, but my, I, I would say my ability to tune in and, and empathize, if you will, uh, is related to musicality and group dynamics more than it is to any particular individual. Ah, okay, yeah. okay, okay. So, getting uh, so okay. And remember, you can all call in. Just want to remind you: nine one nine five one eight nine seven seven three or computers two K voice. If you'd like to join us on um, the studio, we'd love to have you. If you have a question for Greg, anything about your personal experience, anything you've had before that you want to share about your experience in the arts in drumming, in anything. And um, did you have a question? You look like you had one. Did you have a question? Okay, so what else would you uh, like to share about this experience of coming together as in this oneness? Like what's possible for groups? I mean, and, and, and I guess the, 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 one of the questions I want to ask is not just what's possible, what have you seen? Like what are some ex 
really cool experiences, whether it was with kids. Right. Like, well, there have like, been some good surprises along the way. Yeah, like and, what kind of surprises? I love those. What, what's really interesting is that this is um, useful because it dispels the ideas of fragmentation, that we're somehow separate from one another. And it, it gives you an opportunity to figure out how we're all actually connected. For instance, uh, I have one client that brought me in to work with a group in a, a particular office that was having an issue around race. And so they said, hey, Greg, we want you to come up. We want you to work with this group. And uh, they've got a race issue, uh, and you've got two hours to fix it. And I thought, what are you talking about? This is crazy. And so I go and spend the first half hour of my program um, doing get-to-know-you things. And what I discovered was that this particular group had been working together for years, that they worked 12-hour days, that they absolutely loved their clients, but they didn't know one another. And so they had a really lousy break room. They didn't get to use it very often. How long did it take you to figure out that they didn't know each other? Half an hour. Well, then you have some talent. Maybe, but they're they're all focused on their. He has uh, some thanks. talent. The group was all focused on their product and their practice, but they really weren't looking at the relationships between themselves. And so, in the course of the next half hour, uh, we learned, for instance, that oh, Susie really loved her grandkids, but they lived far away, and Bob liked to sing in the church choir, or um, that. Uh, Sally had a, um, uh, a son that was dealing with addiction issues. You know, all kinds of stuff that's coming up on a human level that these people never get to talk about. Uh, but it was amazing to learn that their issue had nothing to do with race at all. That's just what management perceived to be the problem because it was a rural town and most of the workforce was African American and the managers were white and they were being brought in by corporate headquarters and, and rotated in and out, but they were never training or promoting from within. It's amazing how we make things up. It was all about equality and nothing about race. And so so through the drumming, what happened? This showed up. And so it gave an opportunity to talk about hard stuff that we wouldn't normally get to talk about. That's, that's fabulous. What was another surprise? Oh, gosh, another surprise. Anything with kids? All the time. All the time. Yeah. Kids are, are so willing to go for it. And kids will do whatever you ask of them. Third grade's my favorite because they'll, they'll just do anything. And so you start to learn about what's, what's really lighting their fires. And if we can embrace that and nurture that, then we're creating kids who are doing what they love and they become stellar at those things. But we have really institutionalized education uh, here in the United States. And so they have to learn what they have to learn but there aren't these opportunities very often to do these other things. So one of the songs that I teach kids uh, is one that I I learned in Belize from the Garakuna people um, just a couple of years ago. And it's all about the things that you do every day. And so we we empower the kids to drum and to dance, and they get to dance the stuff that they love. And you just never know what's going to show up. Uh, you, You see a kid that loves his video games, and then you see a kid that loves to ride a pony. But then you see a kid that loves to help his mom in the kitchen. And you just never know what's going to turn up in these kinds of occasions. And it's just magical. No, and we're and people are magic. Yeah. I mean, we all have stories. We are, I think we all want to connect. We just don't know how. Yes. Not. I mean, there are some people who really know how to connect. Mm-hmm. And then there are people who don't know how to connect but want to. Right. And I think that you, your idea of drumming is a fabulous way to give people permission and a, and a resource, a way to connect even when they know how and when they don't. Right. Because it's hard to connect. It's hard to be a connector, want to connect, and people that, that you want to connect with don't want to connect. That's the important stuff, right? We can't do it on our own. We can, no. As, as a species, we have been only successful because... We've learned to depend on one another. And now we have this abundance in, in this particular society that allows us to ignore a lot of that. And when, so when you first found, saw that thing happen with the drumming and the kids, mm-hmm. and that lit your fire, had you ever seen anything up to that point that lit your fire or, or that showed you the, the 
the magic of connection like that had? It's you know it's all been a uh, progression. As a scouter, I was I was involved in in the Order of the Arrow, the Honor Camping Society, and there were rituals and ceremonies based on Native American traditions mm-hmm. there, and reconnecting to those tribal ideas and honoring the natural world. Mm-hmm. And then I, I go off to high school and I joined a band, and so I learn about the power of of collaborating through music to create this thing that's bigger than we are. And then I go off to college and and I join the military and, and I learn about marching and the snare traditions of drumming you know, and how those things motivate people and coordinate people. But you have followed a path of connection. Yeah. I mean, you have the things that you have picked up to learn from the things that you have done have been about support and connection. Right. Isn't it so interesting when we look at our lives and we look back and we go, you know, it may, the military. I mean, you don't think, you know, maybe I wouldn't think about the same thing, but, you know, that was, it's been part of your path. Sure. Right? To be this to supporter of connection. Mm-hmm. And so are all the things that you have done. And it's interesting that you, even early on, that it wasn't, you weren't, it wasn't the people you were connecting with. It was the something else. It was the bigger picture. It was the bigger picture. It's about the bigger picture. So you started off connecting with the bigger picture. Right. And then your path has Takes been you to into get some smaller to, pockets. To get yeah. back to the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. Isn't life just funky? It's interesting. It well, when you think about what's that old saying about, you know, there, there are lots of ways to climb the mountains, but they all go to the top? Yeah. Yeah. And so that has been true for me as well. I, I keep circling back around that mountain, finding mm-hmm. these common threads mm-hmm. that are all taking to me the same place. And so is it a... Uh, the feeling for you is it a, like a real peace? It's like this is your purpose. Would you say this is your purpose? Yeah, absolutely. This is my purpose. This is your purpose. Yeah, and you know that. Well, I've done a lot of work around trying to figure out what that purpose was and, and how to articulate that purpose. Uh, before mm-hmm. you did drumming or after? Uh, well, I've really done the work more recently, uh, trying to figure out how to relate drumming, this this weird thing that you know no one would. Uh, think was welcome in a classroom or a corporation mm-hmm. or a congregation uh, and how to language that in a way that has broader appeal. This is hard. You know, we, I know a lot of you out there are sitting on things that are profound and it's hard to put into words mm-hmm. the experiences that we have when they're profound or when they're just ours and we don't, and we know they're good, but we don't really sometimes know how to express how good or the magnitude behind what they can do. Right. And we take a look at certain things that seem so simple, like, say, drumming, and we and not realizing the power. Like, you know, we've talked about this before, Greg and I, about this thing that I like to do with talking sticks and how it brings people together mm-hmm. and it helps them connect in their humanity. Right. And this is what you're doing. You yeah. know, everybody is the same. And it's hard to put into words those kinds of experiences because... When just ex- when you just explain the experience, it doesn't. It's hard to paint the picture of the possibilities. But when it, you've experienced the experience, it takes on something different. Yeah, yeah. If you just talk to me about it, maybe maybe I understand it in my mind. But when I get to experience that with you, then I've I've really come to embody right. that that level of expression, that level right. of connection, and that's right. huge. It's huge. It's so different. We we spend so much time in our heads right. that. Uh, we lose touch with what we actually feel. And you know, back in the old days, you know, they talked about the gut feeling, or I, I know it in my bones. Those kinds of expressions were much more common 50 years ago, 60 years ago, right? Well, uh, back 50 years ago, yeah. Yeah. So um, part of what I studied in graduate school was the downfall of that connection to our physical being and how during the industrial era, uh, you know, we invented this thing called the company doctor. And the company doctor is suddenly the person that's able to decide whether or not you're capable of working today. <laughs> right? And so we, we start going to these experts that are now the people who decide whether or not we're healthy or happy or whole. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and we lose connection with ourselves and, and with right. our communities. Right. Exactly. So this has been an interesting journey for you. Yeah. And for us to wa- be a part of and watching how, how, as a young man, what he, as a young boy, what he did all the way, all the little, t- all the things that take you to your passion. And then one day you wake up and go, oh, 
let me connect it backwards. Right. Purpose work is, is huge, and it, it's so important. And uh, I, I think what really started me on that particular path uh, was touching base with a TED Talk by a fellow named Simon Sinek, S-I-N-E-K, uh, called Start With Why. And his talk was really about marketing, but the premise of it is understanding why you do what you do. Not just the what, yeah, but the why, right? And, and it and it's 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 great. So we highly recommend that you do it. So tell everybody uh, where they like. This is time for some bodacious marketing. Oh, okay, go. So uh, you can find me online at drumforchange.com. That's D-R-U-M-F-O-R change.com. And my new website will actually launch in about a week. Uh, so you'll get to see my sleek, new, minimalist styling uh, that I'm really excited about. Uh, but you'll also see my calendar uh, that will tell you about all the occasions where you might find me. Uh, coming up, I'm, I'm working regionally throughout North Carolina. I'm hosting a conference for people that do what I do uh, down in South Carolina at the end of February. Uh, my sweetheart and I are hosting a retreat in April, the first weekend of April. It's a digital detox retreat. We're calling it Camp Unplugged. We hope you can join us there. It's an opportunity to stay in a cabin, sleep in a bunk bed, eat in a dining hall, and turn in your technology so that you can have face-to-face conversations with the people around you. I think what you'll find, and just what I'm imagining, is when you drum, you connect, but then you also have those times of, of, of meditation at the same time. Yeah. So you're accomplishing all kinds of goals. So and if you are in Timbuktu and you want to know more about Greg, he'll come to you. In For Timbuktu. Sure. Yeah. I'm yeah. I'm happy to travel because I think it's important and worthy work. Uh-huh. And it doesn't need to be serious work. We can do this stuff joyfully and still accomplish the goals. Exactly. So whether you're working with children, adults, corporations, whatever it is, it's um, there's opportunities. I mean, Greg, do you believe that people can connect? Do I believe that people yeah. can connect? Are you kidding? There you go. There's your yeah. answer. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, people can connect. Without doubt. Without it. Without a shadow we need of a doubt. We need yeah. It. it doesn't take much. It takes a little drumming. It takes some things like that. But it really and truly, we're meant to connect. So, you know, you might want to take them up on it. So, uh, can you show my slide? Just a second. So, if you're listening, not if you're, but just listening to this, I'm offering a special coaching package for anyone out there that's listening, just give me a holler at Marilyn at MarilynShannon.com, and that could be for couples, families, individuals, businesses, just let me know. And final words of wisdom, Greg? Final words of wisdom. Express yourself. It's important. Yeah. Don't bottle that stuff up. Go out and connect with other people. Make those heart connections, whether they're verbal or musical or a great big hug, and reconnect with the people and the planet that you live with. Yeah. And I would like to add just to that, because that's there's not much I could say to that. But in that connection, we are, there's no, we don't have to be perfect. Because when we're doing these kinds of things, we're all in the same place. And we're having fun. And we're sharing in that, in the party, so to speak. So it's important to just to go and do it. Find yourself a group. Start a group. And yeah. you don't need, right? Can people start their own groups? Sure, absolutely. And where else do they find groups? There's lots of resources online. Uh, if you're looking for a facilitator, someone that does what I do, go to dcfg.net. That's the website for the Drum Circle Facilitators Guild. And you can find practitioners committed to professionalism in this craft of bringing people together through rhythm. So with that, we are going to be ending our show for the day. We love having you here, love connecting with us. This is one way of our connection. And I invite you to come back each and every week for more stories, more, again, techniques, philosophies, ideas, things maybe you thought about, but maybe, just maybe you're thinking about it a little bit deeper today than you have before. Maybe, maybe you have in mind today somebody that you would like to connect with, and here's a good way to start that conversation. So with that, have a marvelous, marvelous day, marvelous week. We'll see you next week, and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Come again. Everybody, take care. I'm Nan. See you soon. Bye, everyone. Do one, do one, do one, do one.
You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. Our weekly lineup of call-in programs includes Computers 2K Now with Omnon Nissan, My Life, My Will with Gisela DiCarlo, The Tanya Love Show, Help Then with Debbie Brooke, Breaking Free with Marilyn Shannon, Triangle Be Well with Howard Jacobson, Lunch and Learn with Rabbi Yisrael Cutler, Lessons of Vietnam with NCVVI members, Parent Dome with Ryan Miller, Current Affairs with Amnon Nissan. And if you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archive section on nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Atomos.com, makers of quality video recorders and converters, CarolinaApparel.com, and DeltaForce.net. <laughs>